I can't go to the Candace, uh, commonly referred to as Candace. And it's kind of funny, we read history. History speaks of these great queens of Maryland. And every queen they refer to as Candace. You're like, well, wow, how many Candaces were there? Was the Candace that fought the Romans in 24 BC? Was the Candace that was ready for her troops to fight Alexander when he was at Alexander conquered the Persian Empire, which Egypt encompassed at that time, which was in 330 BC? So, which Candace are we referring to? When we come to find out, when we look at the language, we understand what the word Kindake, which was misinterpreted as Candace, um, we understand that. They, that's the word in Meroitic for queen. So they were just saying queen as opposed to the name of an individual. Historically, we look at the kingdom of Meroe. Meroe does not really begin to thrive until about the 4th century BC. Around the 300 and something BC period, up until about 380. So about 600 years, Meroe thrives as a great, great civilization. Before Meroe, again, we had Napata. Napata begins to merge around the turn of maybe the 9th century BC up until somewhere around the 4th century when the kingdom began to move south. Um, there's actually accounts or records, if you will, of Meroe and Napata um, existing simultaneously. So it's really unsure of when actually one ended and when the other one began. We know around the time, like I said, the 4th century, the power base or the power, the influx moves south. Um, but I believe that Napata was always reverenced perhaps as the great, not because it don't even because their ancestors were there, but also the great temple of Juan, the holy mountain of Jebel was there, the temple of Amun. And that was the seat of of power, because that was the seat of actually the, what they refer to as the seat of God. So no matter if it was a Murawe at that time, I believe the Murawites would have made their pilgrimages north to Napata. Not only to commune with their ancestors, but to be where it actually all began. We also had a chance to visit um, the Royal City. Or should I say, what the Pyramid Field in Maryway was the adjoining Royal City. Um, one of the great things about the ancients, their burials weren't, too not, weren't that far away from where they actually lived. And usually within the living quarters or the cities or the living places where they actually dwell was always a great temple, um, usually to the principal deity at that time or the principal understanding of which they were trying to relate to at that time. And in the royal city of Meroe, you see one of the great temples of Amun. We're standing here at the Roman-style bathhouse in the royal city of Meroe. We also have what they refer to as the Nubian bathhouse. And the Nubian bathhouse is quite interesting because it wasn't until about maybe 40 years ago they actually discovered the true purpose of this. And the reason why it happened was the Nile actually over flooded and the water began to come out of the mouths of these lions that are around the bathhouse. And they understood that, wow, this was actually a place that they had as a bathhouse. And the water comes inside through the mouth of all these Lion, yeah. Come, come, come back on over Come, come, come. It's actually referred to as a Roman style bathhouse. And one of the things you understand during this period, the Nubians, or excuse me, the Marowites, the Marowites had close relations to the Romans and they fired some of the Hellenistic ways of doing things. And that was an example of it. It's 1946. 1946. A very famous flood. He said his father, he came early in the morning just to check, he found it's full of water, you know. Uh -huh. Then they called the people of that day in Khartoum, the head office of the antiquities. They came, they just make holes outside. See where it From where the water comes, they just got some of the uh, alabaster. But it, it, the water did not come from the regular, I mean, circulation of that one. All these holes, the water they have, some, yeah, it comes inside. But the main gate you can say for water is from that lion in the corner okay. it comes from up to this you, there is a hole over there right. at the end of the okay. the back back of the of the line it comes through that one and comes inside yeah. and down it goes out by that alabaster tube in 
now it's funny because at this point <laughs> you have to travel almost downstream to go north because the mile makes this sharp S curve and the quickest route to get to Napata is actually through the desert and you cut across the desert at the same time and doing such it, it's you know I often tell people this when I speak about Nubia it was really surreal feeling and to really actually go across the desert is really it was like literally almost going through a time machine Sometimes I was thinking about it, I think it was myself. I haven't made that trip twice. I'm like, wow, almost like I can't believe I was actually there. Every time I look at pictures, I see it, and I'm like, did it actually even take place? That's how surreal it is. It's a place that history and time just stood still. It, it literally stood still. And it, it's the most amazing thing on earth. I can't describe anything that's better than that. And I love, I love Egypt. But this place, it's almost, like I said, it's an envelope in the fabric of time. Um, but as we went across the desert and we arrived in the Pata, one of the first places we have to visit is, again, the centerpiece for the kingdom itself, and that is the temple. The part of one of the most important archaeological sites in Sudan, the site is called Jabal al Barqa site. Jabal al Barqa site is a part of uh, the Mushai civilization. The chronology of this site is dated back to the mid of the 8th century BC. And now we are in front of the Amun Temple. This uh, 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 Amun Temple is built here uh, by the Sudanese, by the Danubians, in fact, and uh, uh, in order to worship the Amun. You see that it displaces the sun and at the same time the night. Yeah, the night is nearby, yeah.